While you were asking ChatGPT to write a poem or creating a wild image with Midjourney, a quiet revolution was happening in the background. It wasn't about what AI could do, but what it costs. Over the last two years, the price of accessing powerful artificial intelligence has plummeted by an astonishing 80%. Imagine the performance of a cutting edge supercomputer from 2023 now being available for the price of a used laptop. This isn't just a sale, it's a seismic shift that's rewriting the rules of technology and business. But this price war raises a critical question. Is this the beginning of a new, open, competitive era for technology? Or is it a deceptive calm before a few mega corporations swallow the entire market whole? The answer is hidden in the data, in the complex dance between price, power, and performance. And to understand it, we need to explore a concept that economists are calling the AI economic frontier. Think of the AI market like a massive, constantly changing store. This store has thousands of different AI models on its shelves, each with a price tag and a quality score. If you wanted to find the absolute best deals, the models offering the most power for the lowest price, you'd be mapping out what the OECD calls the AI economic frontier. This frontier isn't a place, it's a line on a graph. It connects all the most efficient AI models available at any given moment. Anything below this line is a bad deal. You could get better performance for the same price or the same performance for cheaper. The models on the line are the champions of the market. They represent the best bang for your buck you can possibly get. What researchers found is that this frontier is moving at an incredible speed. Over the past two years, it has shot up and to the left. Up means the models are getting smarter and more capable. Left means they're getting drastically cheaper. For instance, the performance of OpenAI's landmark GPT-4 model when it first shocked the world is now available for less than one hundredth of its original price. But the shape of the frontier tells another crucial story. It's not a straight line. It's a curve that gets steeper and steeper. This means there are diminishing returns at the top end. Moving from a cheap, basic model to a solid mid-range one gives you a huge boost in capability for a relatively small price increase. But getting that final 5% of performance, the kind needed for highly complex reasoning, costs an astronomical amount more. This economic reality is forcing businesses to be smart, to choose the right tool for the job, rather than always reaching for the most expensive, all-powerful model. This frontier isn't just an abstract economic concept, it's a battlefield, and the list of companies fighting for a spot on that line reveals a surprising global power struggle that is far more complicated than a simple tale of Silicon Valley dominance. For a long time, the story of big tech has been one of American dominance. And in AI, that's still largely true. Companies like Google, Meta, OpenAI, and Anthropic are the titans of the industry, consistently placing models on the economic frontier. They have the money, the talent, and the data to push the boundaries of what's possible. But the latest data shows that their lead, while strong, is being seriously challenged. And the challengers are coming from two key fronts. First, Europe. A French startup called Mistral AI exploded onto the scene, not just by creating powerful models, but by making many of them open and accessible. They prove that you don't need to be a $100 billion behemoth to compete at the highest level. Alongside them are German and British companies specializing in image generation, like Black Forest Labs and Stability AI, who have also carved out spots on the frontier. Second, and perhaps more significantly, is the rapid rise of China. Developers like DeepSeek, Jipu AI, and Alibaba are no longer just playing catch-up. They are now releasing highly competitive models at aggressive prices, often matching or even beating their Western counterparts in specific tasks, especially in Asian languages. They are rapidly gaining market share and have become a formidable force in the global AI race. The result is a market that is surprisingly dynamic. The OECD report calls it an oligopoly, but one with a high churn rate. This means the top dogs are constantly changing, one month, OpenAI might release a groundbreaking model and dominate the frontier. But just a few months later, Google, Mistral, or DeepSeek will release their own update, catching up and forcing the frontier to shift once again. 
This constant pressure from all sides is a huge reason why prices are falling and quality is rising so quickly. It's a market in constant motion. But this raises an obvious question. How are smaller startups from France or companies from China able to keep pace with American giants who have seemingly endless resources? The answer lies in a powerful, almost philosophical movement that has become the unsung hero of this entire AI revolution. The secret weapon leveling the playing field is open source. Traditionally, leading AI models were like black boxes. Companies like OpenAI built them, but no one outside the company could see their inner workings, the code, the architecture, or the weights that represent the model's learned knowledge. Then, Meta did something that sent shockwaves through the industry. They released their powerful Llama models to the world, not as a product to be sold, but as an open resource that anyone could download, modify, and build upon. This was a game changer. Suddenly, startups and researchers around the world had access to a state-of-the-art foundation model without needing to spend the hundreds of millions of dollars it costs to train one from scratch. Think of it like a world-class engine being given away for free. You still have to build the car around it, but the hardest, most expensive part is already done. This open source movement, now championed by companies like Mistral and Hugging Face as well, has had three profound effects on the market. First, it dramatically lowered the barrier to entry, allowing a new wave of innovators to enter the race. Second, it destroyed customer lock-in. If a business builds its AI application on an open source model, it isn't tied to a single provider like Google or Microsoft. They can easily switch to a different model or a cheaper cloud service if a better deal comes along. This forces everyone to compete on price and quality, benefiting the end user. Third, it created a vibrant ecosystem. A whole new industry has emerged of smaller companies that specialize in fine-tuning these open models for specific tasks, like legal document analysis or medical diagnostics driving innovation in countless niche markets. This competitive landscape of developers, however, is just the first layer of the system, because once these incredible models are created, they need to be delivered to businesses and users around the world. And the companies in charge of that delivery service hold a terrifying amount of potential power. The AI market is essentially a three-layer cake. At the top, you have the AI developers we've been talking about, the open AIs and Mistrals creating the models. At the bottom, you have the thousands of AI-powered apps and services that we, the end users, interact with. But it's the layer in the middle that could be the most important, the cloud providers. For most businesses, running a massive AI model is not feasible. They don't have the data centers or the specialized chips. So they rent them from the cloud hyperscalers, Amazon's AWS, Microsoft's Azure, and Google Cloud. These three companies act as the world's AI distribution network. This has created a massive fear among regulators, the fear of the cloud gatekeeper. The concern is that these giants could use their control over the cloud to rig the game. They could favor their own AI models, make it difficult or expensive to use models from competitors, and effectively choke out any competition. Microsoft's deep partnership with OpenAI, for example, is a textbook case of this kind of vertical integration that raises red flags. However, the OECD's analysis found something surprising. For now, at least, these gatekeepers are leaving the gate wide open. The data shows that the hyperscalers are not charging a significant price premium for AI services. In fact, they offer a huge menu of models from many different developers, including their direct rivals. You can easily run a model from Anthropic, a Google-backed company, on Microsoft's Azure Cloud. This fierce competition among the cloud providers for business customers is keeping them honest. The fact that these giants aren't behaving like classic monopolists yet is very good news for the market. But the entire system is built on a fragile foundation, and there are several cracks beginning to appear that could cause this whole dynamic, competitive market to crumble into the very thing everyone fears. The current vibrant state of the AI market is not guaranteed to last. 
The OECD report points to several gathering clouds on the horizon that could spell the end of this competitive era. The first and biggest threat is the sheer cost of progress. While today's models are getting cheaper, the race to build the next generation of AI, true artificial general intelligence, is becoming unimaginably expensive. Training costs are entering the billions of dollars. This is a game that only a handful of the world's richest companies can afford to play. The risk is that the current competitive landscape is temporary, and that the next great leap forward will leave everyone but the hyperscalers in the dust. The second risk is that the partnerships we see today become suffocating. The deep financial and technical ties between developers and cloud providers could tighten. Microsoft could, in the future, decide to give OpenAI's models preferential treatment on Azure, making it faster, cheaper, and better integrated than any competitor. This kind of self-preferencing could slowly starve rivals of oxygen. The third threat is the simplest one, acquisitions. The classic move for a tech giant is not to outcompete a promising startup, but to simply buy it. If Google, Amazon, or Meta start acquiring the most innovative independent AI labs, the competitive pressure that has driven prices down and quality up will vanish overnight. This confluence of risks, the soaring cost of compute, the tightening of vertical integration, and the looming threat of acquisitions paints a precarious picture. The AI market is currently walking a tightrope and the winds of consolidation are beginning to blow. So where does this leave us? The evidence suggests we are living in a temporary golden age of AI competition. Behind the headlines, a fierce global battle among a growing number of players has made this incredible technology better and cheaper at a historic rate. The AI economic frontier is being pushed forward not just by the usual suspects in Silicon Valley, but by innovators in Europe and Asia, all supercharged by the democratizing power of open source. But this era is profoundly fragile. The very forces that drive innovation, the endless hunger for more data and more computing power, are the same forces that could lead to an unbreakable monopoly. The market of tomorrow could look very different, controlled by two or three vertically integrated giants who dictate the price, the pace of innovation, and who gets access to the most powerful tools ever created. The future of artificial intelligence won't be decided by a single technological breakthrough. It will be decided in the quiet, strategic economic battles being fought today, in pricing documents, in partnership deals, and in the race to control the cloud. The revolution is here, but the outcome is anything but certain. If this video helped you, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We're exploring this new AI frontier together, and I have so much more to share with you. Thank you so much for watching. Do like and share this video. I'll see you in the next one.